MCU news, if you want DC slash DCU news, uh, I probably published that video before this one. Because I'm a DC fangirl. And I'm not sorry. Okay, first, Doctor Strange 2 is going to deal with the messes that the Loki live-action TV series causes. And honestly, I love how interconnected all these shows and movies are. Obviously, they all take place in the, the MCU and their specific universe. But the fact that things that are happening in the live-action TV shows on Disney Plus are bleeding into the movies... Kind of cool. Although that might be a little frustrating for people that don't want to watch the TV shows. There's been talks about not making Deadpool 3 rated R, and honestly, Disney, Marvel, if you do that, you are very stupid. What they would do is they would cut down on the naughty language and the, the violence, and it... No! I know we can make a Deadpool movie without having aggressive language and violence, but it just wouldn't be as fun. Plus, think about it this way. If they don't make it rated R, there's more of a chance that uh, people are gonna bring their screaming, whining fucking kids to the theaters. And I have to deal with uh, diseased adults. I, I don't wanna deal with children as well. So Disney, Marvel, no. Rated R, Deadpool 3. A behind the scenes photo for Thor 4, Love and Thunder shows Thor in, I'm going to say athletic wear, even though it's more leisure wear, and a, a very fun headband. I don't know how I feel about this photo. I like that he has his long hair back for Thor 4, but at the same time, I don't know. May maybe he's just living his best life. Maybe this isn't like something bad or him bumming around. It's just living his best life, okay? Disney has pushed back two unannounced Marvel movies by a year. We don't know what those movies were, so I guess you can't really be upset about it. But I guess you can be upset that you're probably gonna have to wait a lot longer to figure out what those unannounced movies actually were. This lovely lady, who you may recognize from The Walking Dead, may get her own spin-off show. Not the Wakanda TV series we're gonna get on Disney+, Plus, but her character centered TV series. Hell yes. Oscar Isaac shared a photo of him in front of artwork for Moon Knight and captioned it, we are Moon Knight. I know it's been said a million times, I think Oscar Isaac is perfect for Moon Knight. I'm really excited to see more and more of this TV series coming out. And I'm not just saying that because he's eye candy. I know everyone sexualizes him and it's not nice to just say, I want this actor in something because he's a hot piece of ass. He's also a great actor and I think he's gonna do this character justice. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is no longer filming in London, but now they're going to film in the fall in Atlanta, Georgia, which, you know, whatever you gotta do to save money, Disney. We know you're hurting for it. Sam Wilson's Captain America Falcon suit originally wasn't going to be made of vibranium. Instead, it was just going to be high tech from Wakanda, but they decided last minute, yeah, okay, maybe we should actually make it of that, which I think makes the suit a million times cooler and kind of justifies a lot of the crazy shit Sam can do while wearing it. Although I guess he doesn't really need it because he has those sick ass flips. The What If series creator AC Bradley said that the What If series is going to have a lot of surprise cameos, and also within 30 seconds of watching this series, we're going to feel like we're watching an MCU movie, which I just want to say to you is great, and I'm, I'm glad you're so pumped up about your series. But here's the thing about Marvel fans. If you set a bar and you don't meet it, that's gonna be death threats. I'm excited that they're including Spider-Man, you know, Sony Spider-Man with Tom Holland into the What If series, and they're building off of some of what happened in his movies, which I think shows that Sony and Marvel are getting closer and closer. In kind of related news, Aaron Taylor Johnson is going to play Kraven the Hunter in their Spider-Verse, Sony's Spider-Verse, and I, Sony, I just don't know why you do the things you do. You talk about wanting to connect the MCU to the Sony-verse, Spider-verse, whatever. And, and then you cast the person that was Quicksilver in the MCU. If you can't handle the responsibility of this franchise, you need to sell it to Disney. Other people that were going to possibly play Kraven were Brad Pitt, Keanu Reeves, and also Adam Driver. Honestly, I want Keanu Reeves just because... 
I like Keanu Reeves. I like that he's just so one note. Sony's president said that they waited a long time to do Craven. They just didn't all willy nilly it. They waited years to find the perfect moment. I don't think I exactly believe him, but he also said that Sony and Marvel slash Disney have a great working relationship with each other. So here's what he said on that. The great thing is we have this very excellent relationship with Kevin. There's an incredible sandbox there to play with. We want those MCU movies to be absolutely huge because that's great for us and our Marvel characters. And I think that's the same thing on their side. But we have a great relationship. There's lots of opportunities, I think, that are going to happen. Sony, that, that doesn't mean you still can't fuck up, okay? Just because you have a great working relationship and they keep cleaning up after you doesn't mean that you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Interesting though, the Sony president said they don't consider their characters in the Spider-Verse. They actually just consider it their own Marvel universe, which I think is a bit confusing, but fine. Do whatever you want to do. I'm also going to share a very optimistic quote by Sony's president, which may get you excited or uh, might fill you with fear. Dread. We don't really think of our 900 characters as the Spideyverse. We have a Marvel Universe. The volume of characters we have, you know, wait until you see this next Venom. You don't miss Spider-Man. It'll be exciting if they do meet, right? There actually is a plan. I think now maybe it's getting a little more clear for people where we're headed, and I think when No Way Home comes out, even more will be revealed. I know you're getting really excited, Sony, but also, I'm, I'm very nervous for you. <laughs> I know you wanna interconnect everything and maybe it's gonna come out that the MCU is now fully merging with you guys. I don't know. Um, but in my head, you're still fuck ups. Jeffrey Wright's character in the What If series will be more of the narrator from Twilight Zone, but as the series goes on, we're told that he will become more and more involved in it. I don't know why I didn't include that with the What If series news I talked about earlier, but you can't fix stupid. Michelle Pfeiffer shared that she is training for Ant-Man 3 and for 63, she is rocking it, oh my god. Next, no one explained to Sam Neill what he was doing in the Thor movie. He, he had absolutely no idea. He didn't even know what world he was on. And it wasn't until a recent interview where the interviewer finally explained it to him. Oh, you were doing a play and, and you were playing Thor's dad. That he was like, oh, I, I wish someone would have explained that to me. I think it's just absolutely hilarious. Oh, hey, wow. Did you know that the Eternals might have a connection to Thanos? You know, the dude that a Eternals character has blood ties to. So there was a leak of the calendar and here is a description. Living on Saturn's moon, Titan, the Eternals protect Earth from the Deviants and all other forms of cosmic evil. This much anticipated next big blockbuster from the Marvel Cinematic Universe is sure to have fans clamoring for more. I bet my left testicle that they are going to show Titan at its height and then it's slow collapse, please. Because also the director said what she loved about doing Eternals is the crazy world building she got to do. Also, can I borrow someone's left testicle? Just in case. Black Widow's runtime is two hours and 14 minutes. I am so tired of Black Widow news. Please just release the movie. There's more teasers and posters out if you wanna watch them. I'm not sharing them because I'm just so tired. Though Scarlet did say her costume in Black Widow is the most comfortable and she's just in love with it. So that's nice. Are you desperate to see White Vision again? Does where he went rattle in your brain? Do you search for theories and prediction videos on when we'll see him next? Well, there is some good news. Uh, Paul Bettany shared the future of White Vision and he doesn't know. However, he did admit that it would be difficult to introduce White Vision and then never address him in the MCU again. I think it would be funny if they completely ignored it just to blue ball fans, but they probably won't do that. By the way, his little joke that he told that he was going to act with an actor that he wanted to work with his entire life in WandaVision. He talked about the, the backlash of that joke and how actually Kevin Feige thought it was hilarious and was not mad at all for him doing it. Paul Bettany, as long as you don't piss off the mouse, you're fine. They're not gonna bury your body in an undisclosed location. If you're wondering why certain movies are in theaters and certain movies are streaming or 
a, a combination of both. The president of Disney talked about that. Well, the CEO of Disney talked about that, Bob Chappick, and I want to share that with you really quick. There's a whole bunch of data points we have to assimilate to make those decisions. The first consideration is, is it a big tent theatrical franchise? If it is something like a Marvel movie or a Lucas movie, something that's going to have legs, plays in a larger mythology, we've already delayed Black Widow a couple of times. We didn't want to delay it again. Yet at the same time, we always knew the risks that consumers wouldn't want to go back and sit in theaters. So we realized we had to sort of prime the pump. We couldn't put all our eggs in the theatrical basket because we knew that in the weeks leading up to the decision that the domestic market was not coming back and it's still fairly weak. So we're very confident that we made the right call there. We know the marketplace will recover more fully and that will make more sense. Flexibility is a good thing. At some point, you have to step off the dock and into the boat. Those we will take a shot at. Boo! Keep stuff streaming and in theaters. I want to be able to watch movies at home and pause and pet my cats and also pee whenever I want. It's amazing. Tom Hiddleston shared that the TVA predetermines everything, past, present, future, and also Loki has really screwed up. So this is what he shared. If you've done something to alter history or alter the course of the future, according to the TVA, you get pulled into their headquarters and processed as a time criminal. You could literally have done anything. The TVA is an organization that orders and polices the passage of time. They have predetermined what happens in the past, the present, and the future in a straight line. And if you do anything that deviates from that or creates an alternate branch of reality, you get hauled into the TVA and charged with crimes against the timeline. And you're a time prisoner. It will come as a surprise to no one that Loki is one of those time criminals. He has pushed the boat out. He's broken too many of his restrictions. The director said that Loki will see what his actions have done and actually consider his past actions and grow from it, which sounds like we're getting redeemed Loki. Boo. Piff. I want bad boy Loki. But on a good side of this, we're told that we are going to see a wide range of Loki's powers in the TV show, and also we're going to see his real abilities. We're promised some awesome shit, and I am here for it. I'm gonna leave you with a bad taste in your mouth. I'm sorry, that was childish of me. We're told that Loki will subvert our expectations, and I don't know about you, but subverting expectations has become a trigger for me because you usually do subvert them, but in a horrible, horrible way. Not throwing shade at any particular director that liked to use those two words a lot. At this point, uh, if you could like the video, that's great. I'm gonna do just a speed talk of some spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home of characters that are going to be in it. So if that's something you don't want, you should probably click off now. Okay, so first, No Way Home is referring to the villains that are gonna come to Earth and Tom Holland's Spider-Man is going to have to deal with. There's No Way Home for those villains. Defoe's Green Goblin is going to be the main villain in No Way Home. And Sandman, Rhino, and Lizard are all gonna be in this movie, holy shit. That is your MCU news. Thank you so much for letting me ramble on. Like, subscribe, come back for more sci-fi fantasy.